Tonight, Amazon's on fire. Adobe gets even more creative, and thousands of new emoji are ready to enter your life. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 111 for Wednesday, June 18th, 2014. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the big story of the day. Not the only story, but definitely the big one. And this is Amazon's new Fire Phone, which, as expected, was unveiled by Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos at an event earlier today in Seattle, Washington. The 4.7-inch black Fire Phone will cost $199 for a 32-gigabyte model, $299 for a 64-gigabyte model, with required data and voice plans on a two-year contract with AT&T as the exclusive carrier. The unsubsidized price without a carrier contract is $649 for that 32 gig model, $749 for the 64 gig model. Amazon is taking pre-orders now with a July 25th release date. And joining us to talk more about today's event is Donna Tam, reporter over at CNET. Hey, Donna. Hey, Sarah. So, all right, let's let's talk about this. We've got the Fire Phone. Uh, it's they're throwing in a free year of Amazon Prime, uh, and if you're already a Prime customer, you'll get another year. I guess that's to get people uh, really, really used to the idea of using Prime, because as as many people who who have Prime and pay ninety nine dollars per year say, once you have it, it's very hard not to have it. Yeah, I think you're exactly right there. I mean, for Amazon, Prime is is the key to their you know, entire ecosystem, like they, they, that's their big bet for everything. They want you hooked into that and using that regularly and often. And, and so part of it is with the phone, having the prime is, is um, it seems like it's very central to the phone even. And so I can see why they, they would offer it temporarily to try to get people into it. And what about Firefly? Because Firefly is the way that you can actually use this Amazon Fire Phone, not just as a phone and 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 a place to to, to play with apps and everything, but really a way to you know, look up almost any product really that Amazon carries, right? Yeah, I mean, Firefly has to be the most surprising thing about today's announcement because you're right; it's like you can do anything with it. Essentially, I mean, you can buy anything with it. For sure, it seems like that's on Amazon, and um, you can do things like, re like have it recognize a song, and then have uh, your iHeartRadio like app build a playlist around that song, or you can it will recognize like a piece of art and like show you all the Wikipedia information on it. Um, it also does stuff like recognize a TV episode you're watching, and then tell you what episode it is, and um, allow you to like purchase the episode or the series. Um, it's really, it does quite a lot of things that I don't think people have done with smartphones before, even thought that they would think about doing with smartphones. A lot was made of this 3D screen before this announcement. I mean, it, a lot of people got a lot of things right about this Fire Phone, but it's not actually 3D. So what is great about it for anybody who's looking for something new and interesting that they can't get from other phones that are running another version of Android? Yeah, I think you're right that, you know, it's surprising. The 3D technology was downplayed a lot more than we would have expected. Um, and what is surprising, what I think makes it different is going back to Firefly and having this capability that other people haven't thought about before. The challenge for Amazon will be whether or not consumers will want to play with that and also, like, whether or not there will be enough developers who are developing specific apps and uses for, for Firefly and for that technology. Jeff Bezos said on stage that the company had um, ha had had tried out a variety of different sizes. They went with a 4.7 inch screen. He says it's the perfect size. It's the perfect way to be able to hold a phone with one hand and still be able to scroll. At least for most people, maybe not me because I have really small hands. But he also touted some other. Uh, things that I guess other phone manufacturers can't say. The screen is bright enough for outdoor use. Uh, he mentioned if you're outdoors and you're wearing sunglasses that are polarized, you're going to be able to see the screen really nicely. 590 nits is a technology leader, uh, industry leader in brightness. How much of this do you think is going to be attractive for people who have... Uh, so many other options when it comes to Android, because, of course, Amazon's got this forked system versus, you know, iOS or, or BlackBerry or any of the other options out there. Yeah, I think it's really tough to say because, um, 
you're right in that there are so many other options. And we all thought that this phone was going to be like a lot cheaper than what Apple and Samsung have been offering so that it would make it compelling for a consumer to, to, to buy it. Um, I think Amazon's got kind of a tough sell ahead of it because those customers are normally buying their devices, um, maybe looking for like cheaper alternatives and not necessarily something so flashy and full of technology. Those people that were looking for the technology are used to buying things from Apple and Samsung, you know, and may not be as inclined to buy something from Amazon because its brand is more associated with buying things um, and streaming video than it is with hardware. Uh, although maybe that's changing with this. Um, I think it still remains to be seen with like how, how much they can really push this phone among their customers. Yeah, I guess that's, I guess that's my, my final question for you, really. Who is... Who is going to buy the Amazon Fire phone? We've we've got pre-orders happening now. The phone is set to ship uh, just over a month from today. Is it people who already love Amazon and do all of their shopping there and think, well, this just makes things easier? Or is there another subset of people who are frustrated with the options available to them now and actually see something on this uh, the hardware of the Fire that's attractive? I would think, like, with any, like, device that has technology that is very new and untested really um, you're going to get some people who are gadget heads who just want to be those first adopters but i think you're right in that it's i think their main customers will probably be the ones that have already been buying their stuff um as that said there might it's like it's a very different product from what they're offering in the past so you never really know but i think they're the most loyal customers who are like this will fit in perfectly with the way that i shop i mean when you think about firefly being able to recognize a package of you know cereal or something and say like, I'm out of cereal today, I'll just get a picture of this. Um, that's really easy for me to do. If, if their customers can adopt that idea in their heads, then I think definitely they can make it appealing to th that particular sector of people. Donna Tam reports over at CNET. Thanks so much for joining us, Donna, and tell people where they can follow more of your work. Oh yeah, just at cnet.com slash news. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks so much for being here. All right, let's move on to some news in Adobe land. Adobe overhauled its Creative Cloud today with an upgrade to all 14 of its desktop applications in its Creative Suite, plus a new Creative SDK library for mobile developers. The company is also rolling out five new iOS apps. You've got Adobe Sketch, Adobe Line, Photoshop Mix, Lightroom for iPhone, and Creative Cloud for iPad and iPhone. Thanks to Adobe, because now I have things to talk about on my iOS shows. And two pieces of hardware to use for precision graphics on iPad, Adobe Ink and Adobe Slide. Now, Ink is a three-sided stylus, digital stylus, for any iPad that's running iOS 7. Slide is meant as a companion to Ink, and it's a ruler that enables precision sketching. The improved hardware comes as a bundle at $199 and is available only in the U.S. for purchase, at least for now. On the software side, all upgrades are free to those that are already in the Creative Cloud subscription service, and the new mobile apps are free to everyone with an iPhone. Speaking of Apple, today Apple released a new cheaper iMac model priced at $1,099, but you might not really like the specs all that much. The cheaper iMac features a 1.4 gigahertz dual core i5 CPU. The previous base model was a 2.7 gigahertz though. The new iMac CPU does turbo boost up to 2.7 gigahertz, but it's still not quite as a robust model. A hard drive has been cut to 500 gigabytes, and the iMac features a lower-end integrated graphics chip as well. All other iMac models continue to either use the Iris Pro integrated graphics or dedicated NVIDIA cards. Otherwise, the internals of the new machine are pretty much the same, and the new iMac is shipping today. Let's move over to BlackBerry. We haven't talked about BlackBerry in a while. BlackBerry announced a deal today to bring 200,000 Android apps to BlackBerry devices via the Amazon App Store when the new version of BlackBerry's operating system 10.3 arrives later this year. Don't have an exact date, but they say fall. BlackBerry 10.3 users will still have access to the BlackBerry World App Store. Some Android apps were already available to run on the BlackBerry 10 OS, but users will have a simpler and a wider range of apps to choose from once once the 10.3 update arrives this fall, that's according to BlackBerry. The company also said that it will be offering third-party video and music services available via Amazon Store, but is shutting down its own music and video sections of its own store on July 21st. The Second Circuit has handed down a new Fourth Amendment case in the United States versus Ghania case 
which says that the government violates the Fourth Amendment when it indefinitely keeps computer files that were seized pursuant to a search warrant but are not responsive to the warrant. I will explain this a little bit more. The case was based on government agents who got a warrant to search, uh, there was a couple, the Ghanias' account business for evidence of fraud. This is several years ago. When executing this warrant, which was in 2003, the agents didn't seize anything physical, but they did make images of computers that they then kept as government property. Now, in the past, courts have held that during computer search and seizure, uh, government is allowed to seize computers and then search them later for responsive files. In this case, the Second Circuit says the government's right to overseas is only temporary and that it has no right to continue to retain these non-responsive files, not government property. The court doesn't say exactly when the government should destroy, delete, or return these copies of non-responsive files, but it does insist that the government needs to do this. Continued retention of the files is a Fourth Amendment seizure long enough that the retention is unreasonable. So basically, they have a right to the deletion or return of non-responsive computer files, at least as a defendant. Hope you kept all of that. And on to something completely different. Do you enjoy expressing yourself via little graphical symbols? I do. The Unicode Consortium has published a document that shows what 2,834 new emoji characters that are being added to version 7.0 of the Unicode standard will look like. Some of my favorites include a spider, three networked computers, a hand giving the middle finger, and comic-like explosions. No burrito emoji though, so my long suffering nightmare continues. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback, questions, comments at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today. That is tomorrow and every weekday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.